so uh, what we have covered till today's discussion in the topic house property is now we easily can compute we can easily now compute annual value of a let out property or deemed to be let out property or self occupied property this is first thing which we have learned in the previous lectures now we must know that income under the head house property is taxable only and only if conditions of section 22 are satisfied the main condition is you must be the owner of the asset so if you are not the owner of the asset income from rent will not be taxable in your hands to tax the income under the head house property you must be the owner this was one of the condition of section 22 then we came to section 23 and we learned computing the annual value of a let out house deemed to be let out house and self occupied house when i say self occupied house it is only for the purpose of simplicity otherwise it is not only the self occupied house whose annual value is nil one more house is there whose annual value is also nil and that is the house which you could not occupy because your employment business or profession is situated at some other place and at that other place you are living in a rented accommodation so these are the two houses whose annual value is nil as per section 23 sub section 2 now one more thing you should remember that if you remember section 23 sub section 3 that the house is whether it is self occupied or the house which you could not occupy annual value is nil but at the same time you must remember that two more conditions are also satisfied by these houses first that the owner should not let this house even for a single second during the previous year second no other benefit must be derived from these houses whether it is self occupied or the house which you could not occupy because your employment business or profession is situated at some other place and you are living in that other place at a rented accommodation then since in these two houses annual value is nil government will never get the positive income of these houses either the income will be zero or negative so it is necessary to put a ceiling on the number of such houses then we have section 23 sub section 4 which says that any two houses as per the choice of the ssc will be the house whose annual value will be nil as per section 23 sub section 2 all other houses will be taken as deemed to be let out house this is what section 23 sub section 4 has said then i discuss with you one more situation suppose my houses have remained vacant throughout the year so this situation is not covered in the act when your houses remain vacant throughout the year so when the houses remains vacant throughout the year then on the basis of 2017 on river supreme court ruling we can infer that or we can make a judgment that any two houses which have remained vacant throughout the year their annual value can be taken as nil on the basis of choice of the ssc ssc can decide which house to be taken as those houses whose annual value is nil all other houses which remained vacant throughout the year will be again taken as deemed to be let out house so this is not on the basis of act provision this is on the basis of the honorable supreme court ruling in susham singla case of 2017 whenever you study any legal subject law is not always complete or act is not always complete so act cannot be read in isolation you have to read the act along with the honorable court rulings notification circulars different respective acts amendment sex etc it's a long process to gain expertise in any legal subject this is what we have discussed now what is the format of computing annual value first of all you compute if it is let out first of all you compute annual value before deduction of local tax i use this sentence annual value before deduction of local tax in different books you will find this sentence as gross annual value but i am not using this word gross annual value and net annual value i do not use this because these are not mentioned in the act and using gross and net so many times creates confusion so i have ignored totally using of these uh, words gross annual value net annual value i use the words uh, annual value before deduction of local tax rather than gross annual value and annual value rather than net annual value that's it 
so in let out house annual value before deduction of local tax is this starting point less local taxes and when local taxes are allowed as deduction when these are paid only by the owner during the previous year you get annual value then you give deductions under section 24 first is standard deduction and second is interest on capital borrowed for the purpose of that house this is my answer positive or negative if it is deemed to be let out house my starting point is annual value before deduction of local taxes less local taxes you get annual value less deductions under section 24 standard deduction and interest on capital borrowed in respect of that team to be let out house the difference is if positive income negative loss so the process or the format of computing income from house property for deemed to be let out house as well as for let out house is same for self occupied it is different directly you write annual value nil standard direction nil and then interest on capital borrowed in respect of that self occupied house difference is zero or negative it cannot be positive how do we compute annual value before deduction of taxes in case of self occupied it is not required but in case of let out or deemed to be let out there is a process to be followed in deemed to be let out it is very easy expected rent is the annual value before deduction of local tax and what is expected and municipal value or fair and higher higher or standard and lower in case of let out house there are three steps to be followed step one expected rent, municipal value or fair rent, whichever is higher higher or standard rent, whichever is lower step two compute actual rent received or receivable rental income entitled minus annualized rent minus vacancy loss is actual rent received or receivable and step three is you have to apply the provisions first provision was if actual rent received or receivable is more than expected rent then actual rent received or receivable is the annual value before deduction of local tax then if actual rent received or receivable is less than the expected rent only because of vacancy then also actual rent received or receivable is the annual value before deduction of local tax otherwise if actual rent received or receivable is less than the expected rent, not only because of vacancy but because of other factors also then actual rent received or receivable is not the annual value before deduction of local tax then expected rent is the annual value before deduction of local taxes this discussion we have done till today if it is clear 100 percent please raise your hands Sir, I have a little question. Yes. Sir, what is notional income? Notional is not income. You cannot use the word income. Notional can be expense. Notional can be income. Notional can be a figure. Notional word is simply hypothetical figure. That's it. It, it is not actual. It is notional. It has some value. That's it. Okay, it is sir, not actual thank value. It's a figure. That's it. OK, now if the discussion is clear till this point, then you must remember that or you must note that we have learned only to compute annual value. That's it. So what I will do now after annual value, I will proceed. So I will discuss now deductions under Section 24. So let us start discussing deductions under Section 24. After this, the chapter will be almost complete. So what we have discussed till now is Till now we have discussed only till annual value. This is what we have discussed till now. OK, annual value before deduction of local taxes, local tax annual value. That's it. Now we will discuss these two points.
What is deduction under section 24? So let us discuss this. Today is 26th itself, 26th October 2021. So we are now continuing the topic house property and the point which is to be discussed is deduction under section 24. This is the discussion. So I can call it or give it as heading number five. So this heading is having no relevance. That is only a sequence for you to be and uh, to make you understand that we are studying different subtopic now. So it is altogether a different concept. Reductions under section 24. Now within this reductions under section 24, there are two parts. First is standard reduction. Section 24 close A. It says flat 30% of annual value. 30% of annual value is allowed as deduction irrespective of actual expenditure of that house. Irrespective of actual expenditure incurred irrespective of actual expenditure incurred during the previous year in respect of the house. Now what is the purpose behind this? Such things, such clear provisions helps in removing bribe or corruption from this system. This such percentages or such fixed provisions helps in removing discretionary power of the officers. Now everyone will claim 30% flat, whether you have actually spent more than 30% or less than 30% or irrespective of your actual expenditure, it is the rational percentage. If my annual value is 1 lakh rupees, Government is going to collect tax on 1 lakh rupees. If annual value is 1 lakh rupees and if you deduct 30 percent. And suppose there is no interest, then 70,000 will become my income. If there is no interest, 70,000 will become the income. So it is the rational percentage that to earn the income of 1 lakh rupees or to make the house or to keep the house in that position where tenant will come and stay so that I will earn rent on an average 30 percent is the expenditure required to keep the house in maintainable position because it is very simple uh, that you need every year some expenditure to maintain the house whether it is plumber expenses, paint expenses, wood expenses, different expenditures are there. So 30 percent is the rational amount. In fact, in real life we normally don't incur even 30 percent of the annual value. So it is on an average percentage. So tomorrow if any SSC says that I have spent uh, in the same example, I have spent 3 lakh rupees for paint etc. Department says no. The rational percentage has been given to you and that is 30 percent. So it's basically just like mathematics that. If government wants or department wants people to earn 1 rupee on their house, then 30 paise is the expenditure also. The person will incur to maintain that house. It is just like this way as far as interpretation is concerned. On an average, 30% of the amount of income as annual value is required to be spent also to keep that house in that position where the house is in a position to earn that much of annual value. So everyone will claim 30% even if you have not incurred it or even if you have incurred it higher than that 30%. So flat 30% helps bringing uniformity in the policies. No corruption, no bribe because everything is flat clear. That's it. This is standard direction. If understood, please raise your hands. Very good. Now. 
Now there are three properties let out, deemed to be let out, and self occupied. I'm using the word self occupied. Technically, it is having that property also which could not be occupied. So I should now use the word section 23, subsection 2 properties. It can be self occupied or other one. Now, in this case, in let out, uh, standard action will be 30%. Here also 30%, but in self-occupied, since my annual value is nil by default, standard direction also becomes nil. That's it. This is my first direction of section 24. Next. That is relevant one. Interest on capital borrowed. Section 24, close B. Interest on capital borrow. Now, as I have told you initially also, the main purpose of government is to make sure that people are having their own houses. And this interest on capital borrow is a genuine expenditure. So logically interest should have been allowed as deduction and that is why it has been allowed as deduction. How to compute this interest that is relevant. First of all, since I'm talking about house, so there are five purposes for which the loan can be taken. So what are the purposes for which loan can be taken if you want to claim deduction? It can be for purchase of the house or acquisition of the house, construction of the house, repair of the house, reconstruction of the house, or renewal of the house. Purchase, construction, repair, renewal, or reconstruction. Okay, renewal you should use in fourth number just to maintain the sequence. Because when we speak, we normally call it as purchase, construction, repair, renewal, or reconstruction. These are the five purposes for which if you have taken the loan, then interest can be allowed as deduction. Suppose you have taken car loan and you are paying interest. You should not ask that car loan interest should be allowed as deduction here. No. This is the topic of house property and only these five purposes of the house property are allowed as valid purpose of loan and their interest is allowed as deduction. There is no issue. Now, question arises how you compute it. So what is my purpose? My purpose is to teach you how to compute the amount of. How to compute the amount of interest on. Capital borrow. And make sure that in all the cases I have to carefully see that these are the only five purposes which are used under section 24 close B. How to compute the amount of interest on capital borrow? How you compute it? So let us compute the amount of interest on capital board. Now, first of all, house can be let out, deemed to be let out or self occupied. Interest has no relationship with this. Your house can be let out, deemed to be let out or self occupied or the house which you could not occupy. It can be any house or other. Even if covered under 23 where annual value is nil. So, Loan has nothing to do with what type of house you have. It is let out or self occupied. It does not matter. Calculation of interest has no relationship with the type of the house. Calculation of interest has the relationship with what amount of loan and at what rate. That's it over. Now. It is possible that today you have taken a loan for construction. And because of some reason, your construction has taken 10 years to construct. It is possible that today, date of borrowing of loan, DOB, date of borrowing of loan, today you have taken a loan, or 10 years ago you have taken a loan. And suppose loan repayment schedule is 20 years, for example. It is date of repayment. It 
it is date of repayment where it will go on till 20 years for example but today if you have taken a loan for any of these purposes purchase construction repair renewal reconstruction any of these purposes it does not mean that today itself you will start doing the purpose of this. you will start completing for the purpose i have taken a loan today for constructing the house might be the construction has taken 10 years to complete for example after 10 years or after 12 years today or this is the time when my construction got complete i took the loan for construction of the house and after so many years the construction of house got complete now you first tell me one thing this is the period can you think that i was earning any income during this period from the house can you think that during this period i was earning any income any answer no sir no any income why because till this day uh, there is no house in exist yes very good correct answer because till this day there was no house at all so when there was no house neither i can live nor i can let out the house so till the house is complete there is no question of any income in fact ignore the income you cannot live in your own house till it is complete <coughs> so legally till the house is complete you cannot leave it is not a house altogether but expenses were there can you tell me what type of expenses were there though i didn't have the house but expenses were there what type of expenses were there what type of expenses were there so construction so labor material yeah, that is of having no use. That is of having no use because I'm giving flat deduction of 30%. So that is of having no use. And further, whatever those expenses are, construction, labor, etc. These are not to be deducted while computing income from house property. Because you have flat 30% deduction. The expense which I'm talking about is what? This expense. Interest expense on capital borrow bank has nothing to do with this point when you will complete the construction bank says the moment you you get a loan you start paying the interest loans so this is the expense for which i wanted the answer construction labor expenditures those are of having no use to me for the purpose of income tax act department says we are we are we, we are here nothing to do with your those expenses when your house is ready so till your house is ready, your construction expenses are of having no use to the tax department. They are here to earn the taxes. They are not here to take care of our expenses. So till the house is complete, construction, repair, plumber, etc. These are of no use to the tax department. I hope you have understood it. After the house is complete, if you are incurring then the expenses, construction, repair, etc. Then also income tax act will say, that flat 30 percent is the deduction whatever you actually spent is of no use to us so my intention was to ask you this point that till the house was complete there is no income but if you have taken loan you must have been incurring the expenditure yes or no if you have understood this point please raise me If this point is clear, please raise your hands. Very good. Now, what problem has arisen here? If government wants to provide me shelter indirectly, if government wants to help in achieving my personal purpose of basic necessity of shelter, what government should do logically? this much expenditure on interest till my house was complete i was incurring but that was not allowed to me as deduction that was not allowed to me as deduction why because it was not possible to allow this as deduction why because the house was not at all complete after the house is complete until you do the repayment 
interest is regularly allowed to you as deduction interest will be logically allowed interest will be allowed as deduction there is no problem under section 24 interest will be allowed as deduction because now the house is ready if the house is ready then there will be annual value till the house was ready you could not have derived annual value but after the house is ready i can easily compute annual value if i can compute annual value then i can easily give deductions under section 24 and whatever interest i will pay after date of completion is regularly allowed but what about the interest expenditure which i have incurred till the house is complete yes or no are you understanding this point if yes please raise the hands after the house is complete i can compute annual value and of course interest will be allowed to me as deduction under section 24 but what about that interest which i have paid in real life but because the house was not ready it will it was not allowed to me as deduction what about this interest so isn't this question coming in your mind that what about this interest of before completion period so government says now if you do not allow this deduction if you do not allow to the assessee you means government of india if government of india does not allow deduction of interest which is paid in reality by the assessee to the bank or to any other party from whom the loan has been taken to construct or to do whatever purpose these five purposes of the house if you don't allow this deduction people will not be motivated to come forward and take the loan so this the government says the moment you complete your house from that year onwards what are previous interest you have paid we will allow that also as deduction to you so whatever interest i have paid till this period till this period whatever interest i have paid that period interest will also be allowed to me as deduction how it will be allowed that government of india will tell or that income tax act is telling me how you will compute this interest for the purpose of deduction that i am going to explain so the purpose was to explain you the calculation of interest on capital borrowed after the house is complete there is no need to calculate anything it is very easy amount outstanding multiplied by interest rate so for this period for this period there is no problem in calculating interest outstanding amount of loan multiplied by rate of interest that's it it's very simple the problem is this period interest this period interest in this period whatever you actually paid that is not allowed as deduction whatever you actually paid that is not allowed as deduction for this period you have to take the help of act income tax act will tell you the calculation that how much interest of this period will be allowed to you as deduction though 100% will be allowed to you the calculation way is different that i will tell you later on so practically i will not lose anything but the way is slightly different and what is this way this i am going to tell you now so one thing is sure that i am discussing a situation where this is the date of borrowing of loan this is date of completion and this is date of repayment i am telling you interest calculation this is very simple the technical portion is this much it is known as pre construction period if the loan has been taken for construction if you have taken the loan for purchase of house or acquisition of house then it is known as pre acquisition period i hope you are understanding this point acquisition or purchase is one and the same thing so this period is either pre construction if the loan is taken for construction if the loan is taken for purchase it is pre purchase period or pre acquisition period this is having little bit little bit technicalities it is very simple it is post construction period or if 
the loan has been taken for purchase it is post purchase period there is no problem in this period entire problem arises in this period and in fact there is no problem the moment i start telling you the point you will understand it very carefully so how will you compute so i'm telling you the way to compute amount of now actually the calculation starts interest on capital borrow i would like to explain this with the help of a numerical from my book then i will come to the theory i don't want to tell you the theory so that you 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 are having that theory theoretical picture in your mind no you should think logically that yes what the provisions are are logically valid so let us discuss this with the help of an example so let us discuss a numerical through this i will make you understand the concept of interest from my book concept building approach page number don't see the solution if you have this book page 5.14 in this example so let me show you the example so that you can take this screenshot you take this screenshot of this example if you have taken the screenshot please raise the hands or if you have this question with you please raise the hands you must be having this screenshot or this question with you only then you will understand this point interest hurry up everyone please take the screenshot of this example and then you raise the hands okay now let me start discussing this point Mr X took a loan of 15 lakh rupees from State Bank of India at the rate of 15 percent per annum on 1st June 2016. This is not my year. June 16 is not in my years, but my year. But I took this loan for the construction of his house. Construction for how many purpose I can take the loan? Five purpose: purchase, construction, repair, renewal, or reconstruction. it is for construction the construction of this house was completed on 1st jan 20 first of date of repayment of loan is 1st october 20 i repaid the loan on 1st october 20 compute the interest on capital borrowed for construction of the house for the assessment year 21 22 assuming the house is owned by him and is self occupied during the financial year 20 21 so it is a self occupied house but it has nothing to do with my calculation interest does not depend upon what type of house you have so interest depends upon outstanding loan and rate of interest and your repayment schedule further mr x has not opted for optional taxation scheme under section 115 bsc it's a very simple question let me start solving the question now logically you can see what will happen now if i don't tell you any provision if suppose you are not doing income tax then what should have been my calculation let me see 
Let's try differently. Suppose you are not doing income tax set, then what you should have written? Loan amount 15 lakh. So let us write the basic points. Rate of interest, or you can say cost is 15% per annum. It is my cost of amount borrowed. Date of borrowing of loan. 1st June 16. The loan is taken for construction. Is construction a valid purpose? Yes. Five such purposes are valid. Purchase, construction, repair, renewal or reconstruction. When I repaid the loan, date of repayment is 1st October 2020. Construction of the house is completed on date of completion is 1st Jan 20. Compute the amount of interest. This is the amount of interest not for the purpose of bank, but for the purpose of income tax. Act. My real life provisions can be different from the provisions of the income tax set. In reality, I can be paying any other expenditure or any amount of expenditure. What is allowed by the tax department is totally the discretion of the tax department. That thing you must be having um, with confidence in your mind that what you actually earn or what you actually spend might be different from what is your earning and what is your expenditure for the purpose from the from the point of view of tax department. These two are totally different. Reality is different and then what is the provision which is allowed as per income tax act. These two are different. It's not that these will always match. It, it's not that. So we have to compute the interest. Assuming the house is self-occupied. This is another information that house is self-occupied. Second. Assessee has not opted for optional taxation scheme under section 115 BAC. Assessee has not opted for this scheme. OK, now if this is the situation, then in reality for the time being, let us ignore income tax set. Let us ignore income tax set. Can you tell how much interest I actually paid as an assessee? Let us ignore income tax set interest actually paid. Can you tell me how much interest has been actually paid? 15,000 loan. Rate of interest is 15% per year. If I divide it by 12, I can say that this is the rate of interest, not the rate of interest. This is the loan interest on loan per month. Am I right or not? If 15 lakh is the outstanding multiplied by 15% yearly interest is 2 lakh 25 divided by 12. So this is what if I write one. So per month interest is 18750. Am I right or not? And now can you tell me if, with how many months I will multiply to check the total amount of interest? You compute yourself. Uh, let us see then what will be the value. Sir, 51 months. Have you checked whether 51 months is correct or not? So 52. Check whether 52 is correct or not. With how many months? If I want to check total interest, how many months? Fifty one or fifty two? June sixteen till thirty first May seventeen. One year or twelve months. Similarly. June 17. Thirty first. May 18. 12. June 18. 
थर्टी फर्स्ट मे जून टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेल्व एंड जून ट्वेंटी टिल वेन टिल थर्टी सेप्टेम्बर यस टिल थर्टी सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी जून जून जुलाई अगस्त सेप्टेम्बर फोर मंथ्स Am I am I right or not? June, July, August, September. Yes, fifty-two months. Is fifty-two clear? So this is the total interest which I have paid during the term of the loan. It is actual. It has nothing to do with tax department. I cannot always say that this is my actual expenditure. Give me this as a as deduction. No, department's policy is different. You have no right to ask actual expenditure. They will tell you how much they will allow as deduction. Nine seventy-five. is this clear that actually i have paid this much interest actually if it is clear please raise your hands yes so actually i have paid this much interest now but till the house was complete as now i will try to relate it with the provisions of income tax act till the house was complete house was house became complete on 1st june 20 so can you tell me what will be the first year in which i can show my income from house property logically what will be the first year in which i can show income from house property as per the provisions of the act what will be the first year in which i can show income from house property any answer Sir, twenty nineteen to twenty. Nineteen twenty. Uh, yes, nineteen twenty will be the first year. So, since in this year house is complete, now returns cannot be filed on monthly basis. I cannot say that. Uh, someone has to uh, mute. So, I cannot say that. the completion year will be 1st jan 20 till 31st march 20 no it is not possible because income tax returns are filed on yearly basis so this is the year which is 1920 1920 will be the year which is first year which is complete now which is 1920 here it is this period is different so 1920 means starting from which date First April nineteen till thirty first March twenty. This is that year. As I told you that even when the house was not complete, you must be paying interest to the bank regularly. You must be paying interest to the bank regularly. But department was not in a position to allow the benefit of that deduction because till the house is complete, annual value could not be computed. so when i say actually yearly how much interest you have paid so if i go year wise actually actually how much you have paid can you tell me in the previous year 1670 1718 1819 1920 and 2021 how much actually you have paid in 1617 can you tell me how much actually you have paid in 1617 Can you tell me the amount in sixteen seventeen? How much actually you have paid? Any answer? One eighty seven five hundred. Yes, one eighty seven five hundred because ten months are there in this year. Why? This period is only to compute number of months, but this period is not complete as per the provisions of the act because now the year is ending on thirty first May. So I have to take for the purpose of fact thirtieth, thirty first March. So ten months in this. And twelve uh, months in this period, twelve months in this year, twelve months in this year, and in twenty twenty one, how many months? April, May, June, July, August, September, six months. Am I right or not? So one eighty seven five hundred. Sorry. 
into 6. One, one to five hundred. If you do the total, it comes out to be nine seventy five. So it is correct. I have divided with respect to the provisions of income tax set. Total is exactly same, and of course it will be same. Till this point clear because I was, I have still not started discussing with you tax provision. I wanted to show you something different that actually I am paying the interest of 975. Is this clear or not? So as a normal rational behavior person or as a person who is expecting some benefit from government of India, I want the deduction of 975. This is what I need or I want. I may not be allowed actually 975, but this is what is my expectation. Please raise your hand if this is clear. OK, so this is my expectation. I want this much this much amount to be allowed as deduction. Whether it will be allowed to me or not, now that is a separate question and now that I will discuss. First of all. Since 1920 will be the year in which I can file my return of income. So in 1920 there will be no problem. In 1920 there will be no problem. So now I'm talking about Income tax department. So what are the provisions of IT Act? In 1920 there is no problem because 1920 will be the year in which you can file your return of income. So in 1920 how much is the interest? I will not check this interest that is of having no use. This was the actual calculation. I will go by the calculation of tax department. So 1920 is simple. Outstanding multiplied by rate of interest. So 1920 how much was the outstanding? In the entire year I haven't paid a single amount. So outstanding was 15 lakh. Now remember I am not checking this actual now. That purpose is over now. That was only in my mind. I am going by the tax provisions. It says 15 lakh outstanding multiplied by 15% interest. So during this year, this is the interest payable, so you can deduct it. Similarly, in the previous year, it, sorry, in the previous year, 2021, since the house is complete, now there is no problem. Now every year you can claim the deduction. Department says we have no objection. You claim the deduction every year. In the previous year, 2021, again, how much is outstanding? 15 lakh. How much is the percentage? 15 percent. But how much is the period during which is the outstanding? I paid the entire loan on 1st October. So outstanding was only in the first six months. So how much will be this? 1, 1, 2, 500. No problem. So coincidentally, coincidentally, Whatever I pay actu paid actual, that is allowed to me as deduction, no problem. Whatever I paid actually, that is allowed to me as deduction, no problem. Coincidentally, these are same, there is no issue. Though you should not, you should never make a comparison that why actually is not coming out to be same as per the provisions of the act. As I told you, my actual income and expenditure can be different and the in way of computing income and expenditure as per the provisions of income tax act is different because they have their own way and own standards to compute the taxable income and allowable expenditures. So coincidentally, these are same. This is one point. Is this clear that yearly for night? If this is the question in the act, I would have deducted 225 as interest. Sorry, I would not have deducted 225 because this house is a self occupied house. I will tell you later on that self occupied house as it has a maximum limit also how much maximum interest you can allow. But till you know the provision, you can say safely that till you know the provision, how much is the maximum interest which is allowed as reduction if the house is self occupied till you know the provision, you can safely say that 225 is the interest expenditure computed as per the provisions of the act for the previous year 1920. Similarly, you can safely say that 
one lakh twelve thousand five hundred is the interest expenditure which has been computed as per the provisions of the act for the previous year 2021 is my wording clear if yes please raise your hands sir i have a little doubt yes sir why we are not considering months in previous in calculation of interest in previous year 2019 and 20 because in for some months of 2019 uh, the house was not completed income tax department aapko ye to kehta hi nahi hai wo to ye bhi keh raha hai ki jab se loan liya hai tab se lekar sara interest hum aapko allow karenge because in reality you are incurring wo to aapko is saal ke to chhodo wo to keh raha hai pichle saalon mein bhi jitna aapne loan de interest pay kiya hoga wo bhi aapko benefit ki tarah diya jayega so you cannot argue that why for 9 months when the house was complete why interest is allowed ye to extra benefit hai jo government de rahi hai aapko isme problem kya hai in reality, you have incurred the expenditure. As a Tony, you have not incurred the expenditure. Expenditure to apne kiye hai. But because before this year, my problem was the house was not complete, but I was incurring the expenditure. So when the house has become complete, when you can file the return of income, then income tax act says now, at least for that year, there is no problem. You start showing the interest as it is with effect from that year. How we will allow the interest of even previous years that we will tell. Is the point clear or not? Okay, sir. Got it. By interest to my pay career on a Uska benefit was a minna shrew. Yes, we got problem. Or was a minna be chayeta. Okay, sir. Is this point clear to everyone? If yes, please raise the hands. In case someone doesn't understand Hindi, please tell me. I will repeat it. Is the logic clear? In reality, I am incurring the expenditure, but unfortunately, since the house was not complete, I couldn't compute the annual value. And since I couldn't compute the annual value, I didn't have the option to show the interest of previous years. But at least the year in which house is complete, even if the house is completed on the last day itself, at least I can furnish the return of income. So for the entire year, I can show the interest in the annual value of that year. Now, now the problem arises of what? Now the problem arises that as a human being, as a human being, now what is going on in my mind? What is my expectation from my government? My expectation is these three years interest. In reality, I have paid. But government of India has fortunately. I can say that. Though I completed the house on 1st Jan 20. So in this year, the question raised was for three months, the house was complete and for first nine months, there was no house still. Still, I should be thankful to my government that when the house is complete in that year i can deduct the actual interest expenditure of that entire year so i'm not doing any fraud in reality i am incurring the expenditure because if you divide this two like 25 if you want to divide this 225 in first nine months and Another three months, the figure you will get on the basis of nine is to three is 168.750. And on this basis, it is 56.250. So, as per the question raised by this student, I what he is saying is, is that he should have been allowed, the assessor should have been allowed only this much interest. Am I right? Is Sanjeev, is the point clear? Yes, sir. You wanted to say that why only 256, 250 was not allowed, why complete? My answer to you is that if you allow this much, then also there is no problem, but then this human being will also start thinking that I have in reality paid this much interest when this benefit will be allowed to me. That is the only point. Right now, this human being is concerned about these 
interest if you allow only the interest from the date of completion from the date of completion then this human being will be concerned with this much amount of interest also if this question is clear in everyone's mind please raise the hands this question can come in everyone's mind it's a good question you must have at least the question clarity in your mind if you have understood this doubt this dilemma in the human mind as far as this interest is concerned please raise your hands income tax act says that the year in which you complete the house entire year interest you can show in that return the question raised by, by sanjeev was why not to allow the interest of only the period during which the house was complete that is also a valid question but still then the human being or the assessor will think that what about that interest when the house was not ready but i paid it so department has given some benefit to the assessor that at least in that year in which the house is complete you deduct the entire interest in fact now the department will be thinking about this period interest also department is in fact concerned about this period interest also which assessor has actually incurred but income tax provisions were not in a position to give the benefit so in fact this interest will be now allowed as deduction in fact this interest will now be allowed as deduction but the way to compute it is different so now i am telling you what so i have told you i am moving to the next slide what i have told you i have told you i am discussing with you computation of interest and in this discussion do you know what i have covered when the house is purchased or constructed or i should not use the word has i should say when the house has been purchased or constructed then with effect from that year in which this purpose is completed there is no problem in interest with effect from the year in which the house is purchased or constructed there is no problem it's very simple the house is purchased or constructed interest paid or payable whatever is allowed as deduction it's not necessary that as an assessor you are actually paying to the bank you might be paying after some some months or after some days but this much is the interest expenditure which you will ultimately pay so interest paid or payable is allowed as deduction it's very simple there is no problem is allowed as deduction there is no problem now department is concerned or in fact the assessor is concerned what about the interest of earlier period this much 187 500 and this 225 now for this department says that we have a rule so now i am telling you computation of so computation of interest is having two portions post construction period interest is very simple or you can say post construction or post purchase in my example it is construction i can take the loan for purchase also post construction period oblique post purchase period this period interest is very simple that you have understood simple amount outstanding multiplied by rate but pre construction period interest or pre purchase period is not so simple it is having different way whatever actual you have paid department does not go by that calculation whatever actually you have paid calculation is not uh, by this way it is little bit different what it says that so now this is explained to you computation of pre purchase period interest or one and the same thing pre construction period interest 
do you know what is the way to calculate this interest the rules of the provision says i will show you the act later on first of all step 1 first before computing interest at least you must know what is the period so what is your pre purchase period or pre construction period whatever is the case pre purchase or pre acquisition one and the same thing acquisition or purchase is one and the same thing pre purchase or pre construction period the rule says pcp pre construction period in my example since it is construction i am taking pcp so pcp is starts from date of borrowing and ends on 31st march prior to doc pre construction period starts from date of borrowing till 31st march prior to doc this is the rule pre construction period is the period which starts from date of borrowing and ends on 31st march prior to date of completion compare this 31st march with actual date of repayment and take whichever is earlier is this point clear pcp is pre construction period is the period which starts from date of borrowing and ends on 31st march prior to date of completion whichever is earlier this is the period now if i apply this provision in my example if i apply this provision in my example can you tell me what is my pre construction period it starts from date of borrowing date of borrowing is 1st june 16 Okay, wait a second. So it is what. pre construction period is it starts from date of borrowing which is 1st june 16 which is 1st june 16 so in my example pcp is 1st june 16 till when 31st march prior to doc what is doc 1st jan 2020 yes. so before this which 31st march will come 9 31st march 2019 yes 31st march 2019 compare this 31st march with what what is the date of repayment first october 20 so compare with actual date of repayment don't do 31st march prior to dor no right actual date of repayment first october 20 Now tell me which is early. Thirty first March two thousand nineteen. This is this period. This is first income tax provision as far as interest is concerned. That your pre construction period is starting from first April. Sorry, uh, starting from date of borrowing and ending on thirty first March prior to DOC. Compare this thirty first March with DOR and take the earliest one as far as ending is concerned. so this is the period this is my step 1 and what is my step 2 that now you simply compute the interest this is your step 2 when you have computed this period now you compute this interest compute the pre construction period or pre purchase period interest whatever is that so you write these years june 16 means 16 17 17 18 and 18 19 so this is complete here so in 1617 the loan was 15 lakh 15% and how many months 
ten months. So interest was one eighty seven five hundred. Seventeen eighteen. 225 and 1819 this you have computed i am not doing actual calculation it has nothing to do with this actual calculation okay it has nothing to do with this actual this i am simply computing outstanding interest multiplied by rate of interest number of months is it clear or not is step 2 clear if yes please raise the hands sir yes uh, sir, if the date of a repayment is early, uh, before the date of construction, ignore it, ignore it. For the timing, we are not discussing that. Ignore it for the timing. Let us first discuss when the date of repayment is after DOC. Let us wind up this case first. Is this clear? So this is step two. You compute the interest, and now the rule says total of this pre-construction period interest. Is divided in five equal annual installment. This is the rule that you do the total plus 225 plus 225. So the total interest comes out to be 637,500 and X is divided in five installments. So first installment is 127,500. One installment is this. And then the X is whatever interest you have paid before the period when the house was complete. Had the house was completed in the same year when you took the loan, there would not have been any problem to you. We would have allowed the interest in the same year. Since there is a lag, there is a gap between the dates when they when you took the loan and when now the house is being completed. If there is a lag, then you do the total calculation of interest, total amount of interest and make five installments. And these five installments, we will still allow you the deduction, but in five different years gradually. So this is also allowed to me as deduction because in reality I have paid 637,500. So I will get this deduction, but the way of getting deduction is as per the provisions of the act in five different years. The next question arises: which five years? First year is that. Can you tell me logically which will be the first year? Logically, which will be the first year in which I I'll start claiming the benefit of this interest also, which I have paid much earlier. Logically, which will be the first year? Sir, the date which the uh, house was completed. No, don't tell me the date. You use the word year in which the house is completed. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Yes, uh, you want to say something? नहीं सर वो यही कह रही थी पहले 1920 में जाएगा ना इंस्टॉलमेंट यस बिकॉज 1920 में हाउस कंप्लीट है मेरे पास अब गवर्नमेंट इसको ओडेने नहीं करेगी मेरे लिए सो फर्स्ट ईयर विल बी दैट इन व्हिच द हाउस इज कंप्लीट 1920 एंड नेक्स्ट फोर सब्सिक्वेंट इयर्स 2021 एंड 23 24 in these years every year i can claim this as deduction and now if you see the reality whatever i have actually paid is allowed to me as deduction though the years in which i have paid are different than the years in which i have been allowed the deduction this is the only issue otherwise i have not lost even a single penny whatever actually i have paid the interest same interest has been allowed to me by the tax department the years in which i paid those years might be different from the years in which i am getting the deduction but i am getting the deduction of full amount and this is more logical because till the house is complete i could not have claimed the deduction and this is deliberately the intention also of the tax department because it will motivate people to complete the houses as soon as possible because they know that if you have taken a loan but they know that till they complete the house they will not get any benefit it will motivate people to have the construction of their houses as soon as possible because the main purpose of allowing this deduction of interest was to make sure that people are having their own houses till the house is purchased or constructed how can they live in their own houses so it will motivate the people to complete the purchase or construction of the houses as soon as possible 
so this is the pre construction period interest and what is my post construction period interest which i have already computed my post construction period interest was 225 for 1920 and 1112 112500 for 2021 225 for 1920 and 112500 for 2021 112500 for 2021 in these years there is no so this is the total interest so my total interest which is allowed to me is pre construction plus post so this is relevant for me in 1920 the total interest is 127500 plus 225 it becomes 352500 in 2021 it becomes 2 lakh 40000 two lakh 40000 in this year it is 127500 in this year it is 127500 in this year it is 127500 so i am not concerned with these years because in my course i have my previous year 2021 so i am concerned with this value 2 lakh 40000 that's it this is the way to compute the interest so logically if you see carefully how much total interest has been allowed to me as deduction can you see how much total interest has been allowed to me as deduction 352500 plus 2 lakh 40 plus 127500 plus 127500 plus 127500 9 lakh 75000 it is the same amount which i actually paid in my real life the same amount been computed as interest which can be allowed as deduction under section 24 close b so there is no loss to the ssc the way to compute is different that's it if you have understood it carefully please raise your hands if you have any doubt you ask me sir there is a minor doubt though hmm. but let's say when i paid the interest so hmm. this year and that year so uh, like the last year the value of the rupee isn't the same right the value so i lost the let's say the 90 9 lakh uh, 75000 and the uh, which i paid and what i uh, what i got deduction for aren't the same right because of the inflation the value got eroded so i got mm -hmm. penalized for that right? this inf inflation concept you don't apply in income tax that is of having no relevance so you are using the wrong concept here inflation is having nothing to do because it is the policy of the tax department tomorrow in real life in fact you will not claim this deduction do you know inflation is altogether a total different concept you have no right to ask from the tax department entire deduction tomorrow they can say that we will not allow any deduction of interest then what will you say is the point clear or not yes it is the policy of the tax department it is their right how much benefit they will allow and they will not in reality do you know you are not going to deduct 975 this is the calculation the calculation has shown you 975 but in reality department does not allow you to deduct 975 that is my next discussion i will not deduct 975 it's not allowed to me because i told you that when the house is self occupied there is a maximum limit so ignore the inflation department has all the right to decide which benefit they will allow which not tomorrow they can bring a notification or they can amend the provisions of the act and they can say that from now onwards no interest will be allowed so you don't compare that with the help of that this session point is of having no rule no use in the purpose for the purpose of the tax act any other doubt any other doubt no sir yes 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 uh, okay arman no doubt now have you seen one thing logically can you tell me logically why this has been written 31st march prior to doc can you analyze this concept why they have written 31st march prior to doc 
can you think logically why it was necessary to write 31st march prior to doc why they have not directly written doc that's it it starts from date of borrowing and ends on date of completion or date of repayment whichever is earlier why they have not written that why this is written why uh, this so yes. because um, the year in which construction was completed the entire interest for that entire year is allowed as deduction yes okay. very good because the year in which construction is completed the year in which construction is completed department didn't allow only 3 month in 3 months interest department allowed the deduction with effect from 1st april 19 can you see it can you see it? department allowed the deduction starting from 1st april 19 department allowed the deduction starting from 1st april 19 itself this this interest is also allowed to me as deduction in the previous in 1920 itself so had they not written this word 31st march doc they would have allowed double benefit of the same amount these 9 months first 9 months of 1920 have already been allowed to me so it was necessary to write 31st march prior to doc they could not have written only doc is it clear if yes please raise your hands so you have to think logically why these words are there because to make sure that no duplication happens now let me show you uh, uh, from my book uh, this this note or some steps i have framed because at every level i cannot reach my books can reach not i can reach so i have framed some steps where i am not teaching that the students can follow those steps and understand it you can take this screenshot of those steps the steps which you follow we will get what i have told you i have written those in the form of steps so you can take this screenshot is it is it clear is the screen visible yes sir please take this screenshot of these four steps this is what i have followed please take this screenshot and raise your hands or if you have these with you then it helps in minimizing the errors but you must understand it conceptually i will read these steps for you and then you will realize that i have done the same thing if you have taken this screenshot please raise your hands Okay, let me start reading these points for you, and then you will realize that I have done the same thing. Steps to be followed for computing the total amount of interest from capital borrowed. Step one: compute the pre-acquisition period or pre-construction period, if any. Always, it is not necessary that you are having pre-construction or pre-acquisition. If any, you compute it. How do you compute it? Pre-acquisition period or pre-construction period, as the case may be, starts from the date of borrowing of loan for such purpose and ends on 31st March of the year prior to the year in which the house is acquired or constructed. Step two: compute the pre-construction period interest or compute the pre-acquisition period interest or pre-construction period interest, if any. and make five equal annual installments which are allowed to be deducted in five years starting from the year in which the house is acquired or completed as the case may be and next four successive years step 3 compute the amount of interest on capital borrowed for the relevant financial year as follows amount of loan outstanding during the relevant financial year into rate of interest step 4 total amount of interest on capital borrowed eligible for deduction for the relevant financial year is equal to amount computed in step 2 eligible for deduction in the relevant financial year plus amount computed in step 4 for the relevant financial year now this is what are the steps which i have followed in followed in my example 
दो इन माई एग्जाम्पल आई अप्लाइड स्टेप थ्री फर्स्ट माई एग्जाम्पल आई फर्स्ट अप्लाइड स्टेप थ्री वेर अमाउंट ऑफ सेंडिंग मल्टीप्लाइड बाई रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट एंड देन आई कंप्यूटेड प्री कंस्ट्रक्शन और प्री एक्शन now one thing which i want to tell you is can you tell me why i have not written pre repair period pre renewal period pre reconstruction period why i have not written that why i have not written pre repair period pre renewal period or pre reconstruction period why i have not done so so because the house still exists at the time even if you're repairing or renewing yes because there can never be pre repair pre renewal pre reconstruction because you will do repair renewal and reconstruction when you have the house and when you have the house then whatever expense of interest you will incur from that year itself you can start claiming the deduction so there is no need to compute pre repair something etc i hope it is clear if yes please raise the hands and let me show you the act so that you realize that what i have been telling is only nothing but the language of the act section 24 now read this this is section 24 close b going going on and if i show you this explanation this is what is this pre period explanation where the property has been acquired or constructed with borrowed capital the interest if any payable on such capital borrowed for the period prior to the year in which the property has been acquired or constructed as reduced by any part thereof allowed as deduction under any other provision shall be deducted under this clause in equal installments for the set previous year and for each of the four immediately succeeding previous year this explanation is nothing but my step 1 and step 2 which i have written in my book or in every other book you can also find in this in this way you might find this 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 provision in this way so this explanation is nothing but tells you that what are pre acquisition and pre construction period interest is you make five installment and it is allowed as deduction in next five years the first year is the one in which the house is ready with you that's it it is the interest calculation now if you have any problem in the interest calculation you please ask me then i will move to the next point okay now uh, raise your hands if this interest calculation is clear these are the steps which you can follow and you have taken this screenshot also even if you don't follow these steps if you have understood the logic then also it is clear now this is the calculation not the deduction so i'm moving now to the next point this is the calculation not the deduction i have calculated how much this is what i have calculated is the screen visible yes sir Okay, so how much you have calculated? Can you tell me as per the provisions of that how much I have calculated? Two lakh forty thousand. This is my calculation. Okay, so what I have calculated? So what is my interest which I got as per the provisions of the Income Tax Act, as per the provisions of IT Act, with respect to five years previous year nineteen twenty, twenty twenty one, twenty one twenty two. 22 23 and 23 24 
with respect to these years, what interest I got? What total interest I got? This interest is always pre-construction period interest plus post-construction period interest or pre-purchase period interest or post-purchase period interest. Whatever interest is this, it is three, uh, you please write it 350 to 500. In this year it is 350 to 500. Forty. One twenty seven five hundred. It is the interest which is allowed. It is the interest which is eligible. If you remember that language, those steps for for which you have taken this, of which you have taken this screenshot. It is the interest which is eligible. I have not used the word it is deductible. It is eligible for deduction. Now the question arises how much is deduction which is actually allowed? You cannot deduct this much interest. It is eligible. How much is allowed? If the property is let out, if the property is let out, entire interest is allowed as deduction in these years. If the property is deemed to be let out, entire interest is allowed as deduction in these years. But if the property is that whose annual value is. Can you tell me whose annual value is? Is what? Is nil under which section it is nil? Do you remember the section now under which section it is nil? 23 it is 23 two. If it is that house whose annual value is nil, then you cannot deduct this much interest because Government is always at a loss, so government says that there is a maximum limit. So what you must remember is that when you compute the interest, it does not matter which type of house is this. It can be any house. Calculation will give you the same result. When it comes to actually deduct it while computing your income tax of uh, uh, while computing your income under the house property, then if the house is let out or deemed to be let out, you can deduct entire interest which you have got. But if it is self occupied or if it is that house which you could not occupy because your employment business or profession is situated at some other place and at that other place you are living in rented accommodation, then you cannot deduct this much interest. So now I will tell you another concept. Limits. Applicable. Limits applicable for. Interest allowed as deduction. Limits applicable for interest allowed as deduction. In respect of which houses? Can you tell me in respect of which houses? In respect of houses? Yes. Whose annual value is nil as per which section? As per section 23.2. Now there are some limits and what are those limits? So this is no concept. The limits are. What are those limits? The maximum limit is 30,000 rupees per year. That's it. Only in one case, the maximum limit is 2 lakh per year. That's it. So this interest 350 to 500 will not be allowed in respect of this property whose annual value is nil. This 240 will not be allowed in respect of the property whose annual value is nil. Because these interest is subject to the limit. Whether maximum 30 is allowed or maximum 2 lakh is allowed. Only in one case maximum 2 lakh is allowed. What is that one case? If capital is borrowed. On or after. First April to the first April 1999 and sorry for which purpose for the purpose of for heavy purposes which require more expenses. Can you tell me out of five purpose purchase construction repair renewal and reconstruction which are those purposes which require substantial expenditure? For purchase and construction. Yes, for the purpose of purchase and 
construction. If you have borrowed the capital for this purpose and one more condition and such purchase or construction or such purpose, whether it is purchase or construction, such purpose is completed within five years. Within five years, from the end of the year, in which, in which the capital was borrowed, in which the capital was borrowed. Only in this case, you can deduct maximum two lakh rupees. Otherwise, you can deduct maximum thirty thousand rupees. So when you can deduct thirty thousand in all other cases. In all other cases, it is thirty thousand. Only in this case, you can deduct maximum two lakh rupees. Otherwise, maximum thirty thousand. Now, if you come to my question, my question was that in the previous year, 2021, I got the eligible interest 240. So one thing is sure, if the house is self-occupied, and yes, the house is self-occupied in my example, 240 cannot be deducted. Either I can deduct maximum 30,000 or maximum 2 lakh. So let us check whether I can deduct 2 lakh or not. If not, then of course I will deduct only 30. So how I will check whether I can deduct 2 lakh or not? First point. Is the capital borrowed for purchase or construction? Fortunately, yes. Fortunately, yes. Is the capital borrowed on or after 1st April 1999? Yes. When it is borrowed in 16. Has I completed the construction within five years from the end of the year in which capital is borrowed? Can you tell me the answer? Three things need to be required. Is it for purchase or construction? Fortunately, yes, construction. Is it on or after 1st April 1999? Yes. Is the construction or the purpose for which you borrowed the capital completed within five years from the end of the year in which capital is borrowed? Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. How can you say yes? Sir, uh, starting from uh, 31st March 2017, uh, Till 1st October 2020, it is not exceeding five years. No. The concept is, what concept says? From the end of the year in which capital was borrowed. I'm not saying date of repayment. I'm saying construction completed. When the capital was borrowed, what was the date of borrowing? 1st June 16. I'm not concerned about date of borrowing. End of the year in which you borrowed. So what is the end of this year? Can you tell me the end of this year? 31 March 2017. 31st March 17. And then you add five years. 31st March 18 is first year. 19 second year end. 20 third year end. 21 fourth year end. And 22 fifth year end. So if the construction is completed till 31st March 22, when the construction is completed. First Jan 20. When the construction is completed, first Jan 20. If the construction is completed till 31st March 22, again, yes, it is completed much less than much before 31st March 22. You can deduct maximum 2 lakh rupees. So what interest has been coming? Eligible 240, but I cannot deduct 240, but yes, I can deduct 2 lakh rupees. Had the construction not been completed within five years, I would have deducted only 30,000 rupees. Had the capital been borrowed for repair, renewal or reconstruction, I would have deducted maximum 30,000 rupees. Had the capital been borrowed before 1st April 1999 for even purchase or construction, I would have deducted 30,000 rupees maximum. Only in this case, the deduction is maximum 2 lakh rupees. Otherwise, in all the cases, when you borrow the capital for these five purposes, maximum you can deduct is 30,000 rupees. And do remember that you are using these limits only for self-occupied house or for that house whose annual value is nil. 
in case of let out or deemed to be let out, I will not check this concept. Whatever interest I will get, I will allow it as deduction. If it is understood, please raise your hands. Any problem, please ask. OK, now. What is this point? Can you tell me now more precisely which are those cases in which I can deduct 30,000 in case of self occupied house? Can you tell me which are those cases in which I can deduct 30? First, if the construction is not completed within five years. If in the same case, if you don't complete the construction within five years, then maximum I could have deducted 30,000. Other case, another case is what? When I could have deducted 30,000? Sir, if borrowed was for renewal, repair, or reconstruction. Yes, whenever the capital is borrowed for re, re expenses, repair, renewal, or reconstruction, any date, maximum 30. Third case? Sir, if he, uh, capital is uh, borrowed before 1st April. Uh, 1999 for 1st April 1999 for. Purchase or. Construction then also I could have deducted 30,000. I hope the point is clear. Now next relevant point. How can uh, how many number of houses can be maximum whose value can be nil annual value? So two. Yes. Maximum number of houses are two whose annual value is nil. Now, can you tell me logically this is the limit? Which limit? This two lakh limit or 30,000 rupees limit? This was for one house or two houses. Is this the limit applicable for one house or for both the houses? Suppose I have two houses whose annual value is limit, whose annual value is nil. I have taken two different loans. So can you tell me this limit 2 lakh or 30,000? Is it for one house or both the houses? For both the houses, this maximum limit is for both the houses. For both the houses. So I want to explain it with the help of example. It is my house one, house two. And of course, these are self occupied, self occupied. I took a loan. I took a loan and the interest on loan paid for repairs. For house one, it is coming out to be 10,000. For house two, it is coming out to be 12,000. Can you tell me total interest which I can claim as deduction? So 22,000. 22,000, yes. Any problem? If it is clear, please raise your hand. I have two houses self occupied, loan taken for repairs. 10,000 is the interest coming for house one. 12,000 is the interest coming for house two. How much maximum I can deduct? 22,000. Is it clear? If yes, please raise the hands. Okay, next point. Think logically and tell. Again, loan is taken for repair. Interest coming in respect of house one, 25,000. In respect of house two, 30, 35,000. Can you tell me how much maximum I will allow as deduction? 30,000. 30,000. For house one, first of all, 25 is within the limit. For house two, 35 is not allowed. How much is allowed for house two? 5,000. 5, nahi, 35, 30. How much is allowed for house 2? 30. This is first point. Then I need to check aggregate ceiling also. First of all, this 30,000 is ceiling of that respective house. Then I need to check aggregate ceiling. Aggregate ceiling is what? 25 for house 1, 30 for house 2. Total also cannot exceed how much? 30. Is 30,000 clear? So I have checked two points. First, individual limit and then aggregate limit. Please raise the hands if this point is clear.
very good then now suppose interest is taken for house loan the interest is taken for purchase and the loan is taken in 2012 and construction is completed within 5 years for example construction is completed within 5 years and for house 2 it is taken for repair so for purchase it was coming out to be 180 interest and for repair the interest is 45000 can you tell me how much is allowed in respect of house 1 separately is 180 valid yes sir is 180 valid yes sir is 45 valid no sir only 30000 no so rather than 45 first separate ceiling which is 30 then collectively how much 180 Plus thirty. How much will be allowed? So two lakh. Two lakh maximum. This is the aggregate ceiling also. It cannot exceed two lakh rupees. Is this interest clear? If yes, please raise the hands. so i have told you today interest calculation first how to compute the interest so compute four in four steps pre construction period then interest then current year interest simple outstanding into this and then step four is merge the two years if coming then whether that is allowed as deduction or not it depends upon the type of property but is let out allowed if it is deemed to be let out allowed without any limit if it is self occupied or the house whose annual value is nil then maximum interest allowed is either 2 lakh rupees or 30000 rupees 2 lakh is having one case in all the cases for self occupied maximum allowed is 30000 but there can be two houses whose annual value can be nil so this ceiling 2 lakh or 30 is for both the houses another thing 2 lakh separate is for both the houses 30000 separate is for both the houses but collectively also maximum will be 2 lakh always it can never exceed 2 lakh rupees in any case this is i think sufficient for today's discussion and if you have understood this interest please raise your hands if you have understood it so today your homework is just to revise this today's discussion if you have the book then you only revise that one example which i have just discussed that's it no other thing to be revised so don't revise any other numericals from any other book or from any other material only revise this much uh, discussion which we have done today that's all from my side so let us wind up this session and uh, whether i will meet tomorrow or not in the extra class that i will inform so goodbye